Today's scripture reading is from the New Testament. It is Luke chapter 14, verses 15 to 24, and it can be found on page 77 of your pew Bible. This is the parable of the great dinner. One of the dinner guests, on hearing this, said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time of the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land, and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have just been married, and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there's still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If I were to use the term urban legend this morning, do you know what I mean by that, urban legend? An urban legend is a common belief or understanding that a population or a community of people hold, and yet it is not true. It is not factual. We all believe it, but it's not really accurate. And there are thousands and thousands out there, and sometimes they're short-lived, sometimes they're long-lived. An example of one, for instance, is around Halloween. We've all heard those horrible stories about terrible people who do all kinds of awful things to Halloween candy and they give it to children and they're injured and they wind up in hospitals and emergency rooms and all that kind of stuff. And 99% of that is false. There's no real hospital reports around that kind of stuff or ER admittances. There's no police reports really around that. There are occasional, very random experiences which usually involve a totally different set of circumstances. But for the most part, that's not true. At least in all of the research that I've done on it anyway, it's, it's not true. But it has radically changed the way we behave around that particular holiday and the things that go on around it. And I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying it's an example of what I mean by an urban legend. I heard a story a number of years ago, and it sounded to me like one of those kind of stories. It's one of those stories that's kind of a good story. It's kind of a story you'd read like in a chicken soup book. And I wondered, I thought, you know, I wonder if the story's really true or not. It was a story about a woman, a young woman, who was going to be married And just like the day or the day before her wedding, something happened and it all got called off. Her and fiancé, it didn't happen anyway. And I, I don't know the circumstances, but the wedding didn't happen. But all the plans had already been made and the reception hall had already been booked. The menu had been chosen, the place setting selected. It was all there and had to be paid for. And this young bride-to-be, would have been, decided, you know what, I'm not going to cancel it. I'm going to invite the homeless and less fortunate to come to the reception, and I'm going to feed them. Now, is that urban legend or not? You can vote that in your own mind this morning. So I've started searching. Well, come to find out, it may be true in more than one place, but in November of 2010, there is an article in a local Colorado Springs newspaper about the Schaefer family. 
and the youngest daughter of the Schaefer family was getting married. All of it was taken care of. Everything was booked. All the arrangements were made. And just before the wedding, it was canceled. And this young lady talked to her family and said, I want to throw the reception anyway. And I want to do it for the homeless and less fortunate of our community. Family got in touch with the Salvation Army and a couple of bus services and they bust about 150 people to this reception hall and fed them that dinner. Neat little article in the paper about that. When I read that story, I thought of this parable. This parable where there is this invitation that goes out to the deserving those who are supposed to be at the reception, those who are supposed to be at the table, and yet they wind up never being the ones who eat the meal. There's a whole new crowd, a different group. Those who thought they would never be there are the ones who actually wind up sitting at the table and eating the banquet that was, in some ways, they think not prepared for them. This parable out of the gospel is connected with a piece of Jewish messianic legend. And that was this, that when the Messiah comes, the Messiah will hold this enormous banquet. And all of the faithful Jews from all over the world will be invited to come and sit down at table with the Messiah and they will be honored in that place. But what happens in the parable is that for whatever reason, those who were invited don't come. Oh, I bought a piece of property and I have to go look at it. I have bought a team of oxen probably if we modernize the story a little bit, I bought a new car or an RV or a new boat or maybe a new golf club or baseball glove or television set or whatever and I've got to go play with it or be a part of it or whatever you have to do. And of course, the last one is classic. I just got married and I'm not coming. And so in the story, what happens the most unlikely people are the ones who are invited to the banquet. And the owner says, you know what, I'm going to throw this party anyway. I don't care that they're not coming. I don't care that they've made their excuses. The banquet is ready. And I will extend the invitation. And all who want to come can come and sit down at this table and they will be my honored guest. And I wonder what it felt like for them as they walked into this hall and sat down at these tables and were treated like the guests that they never dreamed they would be. It had to be a little bit like those people in the Schaefer story who were bused to this reception hall and sat down at tables with tablecloths and settings and were treated as honored guests. Something they never thought they would be. And yet they were. And yet they were. This morning, we're going to be celebrating our own meal, our own feast. It is a kingdom feast. It is a kingdom feast in that it, it is prepared by God for us. And while there are people who downstairs in the kitchen put the bread together and put the juice together, what they do is they live out a ritual that is much older than any and all of us. It's a ritual that we live out because of what God has done through Jesus Christ for you and for me. We're all invited 
but not all will attend. But I want to invite you this morning. I want to invite you this morning to a dinner that is prepared by God for you. I want to extend to you an invitation to be an honored guest at a meal you don't deserve and you didn't earn and you can't pay for. But all you can do is accept. Accept the meal and all that comes with it. The blessing, the relationship, As I said in my opening comments, this is the month of our 10 by 10 program, which focuses on invitation, inviting people to come and to worship with you this month in worship. This morning, I want to begin by inviting you to come and worship at a meal that God has prepared for you through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I extend to you the invitation to be an honored guest. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we move, Lord, into this moment of sacrament, prepare our hearts and our lives to mingle with you at table, to be your guest, to hear you call me by name, to receive what you have prepared for me from the foundation of the world and want to give to me this morning in this moment of sacred presence In your name I pray, amen. Well, I'm curious this morning, do you guys like free stuff? Do you like it when stuff is free? Free is good, isn't it? Yeah, boy, I tell you what, yeah. You can get all kinds of neat free stuff. And what about free books? Do you like free books? If somebody who gives you a book, every once in a while, I know we give you a book, and it seems like everybody really likes that. Well, I want to connect free with something that's sitting right over here this morning. Did any of you notice this little house that's sitting over here? That's right. It's like a little, it's like a little house, isn't it? And what's in that little house? Books, that's right. All kinds of different books are in that little house. And you know what's neat about those books? They're free. Honest to goodness, they're free. Our library ministry here at the church is starting a new program, and it's called the Little Free Library. And we're going to mount that little house outside on the church property, and anyone who comes by can open it up. It won't be locked, and you can take a book out. And it's your book, and you can keep it. And it would be really nice if you brought a book when you did that and put it back in there so that somebody else might come and pick up the book that you have. Because sometimes once we read a book, we're really done with it and we don't want it anymore. Sometimes not, but sometimes yes. And so you can pick up books and drop off books, and it's a free library. And you know what we're going to do this morning? We're going to, why don't we all go up here, okay? Let's get up here, and we'll gather around our new little library And we'll look at it, and we can open it and see the books that are in there. There's there's some other books in there. There's all kinds of reading books in there, and we'll have to find lots of different books. And this is going to go, like I said, go out in the churchyard, and we're just going to have a prayer this morning, and we're going to bless our little library, okay? Are you good? Okay, let's all bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God. Lord, we pray your blessing upon this new ministry of our church, Lord. And we pray, Lord, just by sharing the written word that we can help to extend an invitation to you and an invitation, God, for people to participate in your kingdom. Lord, may it just be one more way that we 
connect with our community and the people who come and live around us, letting them know, Lord, that we want to be in relationship and fellowship with them. May you bless, Lord, this little library and all whose lives are touched by it. In your name we pray.